welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and welcome to our Sunday Chit Chat Q&A video. If you are new to this channel on Sundays, I read through questions via email, DM, text messages, um, comments. I typically choose one question or one topic to go over and elaborate on, but today is a little bit different. I did choose about five different questions from multiple sources, so from emails, from DMs, from text messages, and um, I'm going to be going over the questions in this video. So if you are interested, be sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Please make sure that you are subscribed and let's get right into the video. So I've been receiving more and more salon questions. Um, like I say in every video, you know, you can definitely take advice. You can definitely listen to other viewpoints, but ultimately what you decide to do is, is up to you. Um, you don't have to listen to everything that I say. You don't have to listen to everything that anyone says, you know, definitely. Uh, there's nothing wrong with hearing information. There's nothing wrong with getting different perspectives and viewpoints, but ultimately, like I say in every video, feel free to do what you feel is best for yourself and also your business. So the first question that I'm going to go over is what do salons look for when hiring and what should I bring? So I do want to say this, uh, when I was running my salon, I can tell you that every salon has a different practice. So when I would do interviews with different people wanting to join my salon team, um, a lot of people have, have come from other salons. And so, you know, just in the process of working with other people, in the process of asking different questions, you'll learn, or what I learned is that uh, every salon, like I mentioned, is different. They have different practices. Uh, you know, not every salon is licensed for the same exact procedures or practices. Um, not every salon has the same requirements. Not every salon is looking for the same thing. And so what I would start off doing, I would recommend anyone, not just people that are looking to go into salons, this is for everyone. I would definitely look at researching the company, researching the business that you are interested in to get a feel for what it is that company is looking for, uh, what it is that company's culture is, uh, what do they value, how are the stylists that are currently working there, you know, how are they, you know, um, is there a certain dress code, you know, that you've noticed or, you know, I would just kind of get a feel. Um, what does the salon specialize in? Because one thing when, when at, at least for me, when I'm looking to hire someone I want to make sure that they have a prior knowledge uh, some information about the job that they're acquiring and in the interview when whenever you're interviewing someone it's my responsibility to um, you know pretty much highlight the points of my salon and my business and it's their points and their you know responsibility to highlight why they would be a great asset for me and you know I'm, I'm explaining why we would be a great asset for you and so it, it, an interview process is pretty much you both selling yourself. You're both, you're, you're both giving different um, highlighted points about yourself or your business as far as why you are, uh, why you should be the pick. And so um, I just want to say that, you know, start off doing your research, figure out what salon, um, you know, the, figure out as much as you can about the salon. Now, the first tip that I want to get into is be prompt. And that was one of the things that I looked for. You know, I wanted to make sure that they were taking the position as serious as I was. A lot of times you'll find that it's, it's very hard to find help. Just, you know, speaking on the owner side, speaking on, you know, the company side, it's very hard to find help. Um, it's hard to find people that are as serious about the role as you are. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I would look for to, to kind of see, okay, are they serious? Is this something that they really are interested in? Is how early will they arrive to the interview? View. Now, I do believe that there is a such thing as arriving too early. You know, you don't want to make it seem like you're not respecting the uh, interviewer's time. You know, you don't want to make it seem like, you know, I'm just going to come in anytime just because. So I would recommend coming maybe 15, 10 minutes early, 15 at the most. Typically, my rule of thumb is about 10 minutes, you know, 10 minutes early, um, just to let them know that you are serious and that you are eager about the position. Another thing that I looked for is your attitude. So just remember that your interview actually starts before you even walk into the salon. Um, so keep a positive attitude even before you walk through the doors. Uh, the next thing that I would look for is experience and or willingness to learn. So just like with any company that you're looking at getting hired into, um, make sure that you're highlighting your um, experience, your licenses, um, any high moments or high points that you had in your career. You definitely want to make sure that you highlight those and then also exhibit a willingness to learn. So, um, you know, just go in there, you know, and ask a few questions about the business as well. Uh, that kind of shows that you are interested and it just shows that you're um, not too self-consumed. A lot of interviewers look for that too. Um, not just, like I said, not just in salon fields, but, you know, just all around. They want to make sure that you are someone that is um, 
teachable someone that is like you know what i'm confident in what i know i'm confident in what i've learned so far but, I, but i'm not the kind of person that is going to turn down any help i still want to learn as much as i can and then also bring a portfolio so i would always look for that you, you will be amazed at how many people wanted positions that didn't bring portfolios and portfolios I wouldn't recommend just having your Instagram as a portfolio, meaning you just go in there with your hand, your cell phone, and you're like, look at some of the pictures I did yesterday. Like, I would really have a professional portfolio put together um, and either email that over to them before the interview. Of course, ask their permission, fax it over, or bring it into the interview with me in a nice folder. Um, and then also, a lot of salons will ask for you to bring someone in or a mannequin head in to demonstrate certain styles. So just be aware of that too, just depending on the salon that you are looking at um, becoming a part of that's something that they may be um, impressed with as well so just kind of do your research like I mentioned in the beginning kind of see what the salon is looking for acts around um, and then you know definitely be prompt have a positive attitude um, highlight your experiences have a willingness to learn you know give that aura and that vibe off and then also bring a portfolio or a person or a mannequin you know whatever that salon prefers now, the second question that I have is, will Bad Chick Hair send wholesale invoices instead of us ordering through the website? Um, I'm not sure what to order. Can you make a package? Yes, I can. Um, different people prefer to pay different ways. Typically, I go through PayPal, but like I mentioned in some other videos, I am working on uh, looking at other payment methods that I feel comfortable with and that are safe for my business as well as my customers and my clients. And so I have definitely sent over PayPal invoices. Um, if you feel more comfortable with me creating a wholesale package for you, that's completely fine. <clears throat> excuse me, just know that I am going to ask a few questions because I have to get a feel for what it is your company is selling. Um, not every company say, sells the same texture of hair. I have companies that only order straight and body wave from me. I have companies that only order deep wave. I have companies that order all of the textures that I offer and they resell them. So it just depends on what your company is looking to sell. Um, I don't have a problem with customizing a package for you. The reason that I stopped doing just only wholesale invoices and I made it available for my customers and clients to be able to to order wholesale packages directly through the website is because I wanted you to be able to customize exactly what it is you wanted. And I wanted you to be able to go on the website and um, at your leisure, you know, without having to wait for an invoice. But I understand that that is easier and more convenient for some people for me to go ahead and create a package and for me to send you an invoice. So I'm very flexible, whatever works best for you. If you do want me to create a package, just know, like I mentioned, I am going to have to ask a few discovery questions just to kind of get a feel for exactly what it is you're looking to start off with or what it is you're looking to order what lengths you know you need uh, what kind of textures you're interested in and things like that so um you know i definitely can do that if you are interested my social media links are always at the bottom of my videos feel free to reach out contact me let me know the situation and i will contact you back and we can come up with a package together and yes i can send over a paypal invoice for you Question three is, can you show us your lashes? So um, I have a few styles here. The um, classic style, which I didn't expect that to be my most popular style. It's the one that I like the best, but I thought that the more flashier styles would get way more attention. They get attention, but the classic sold out. So I don't have a classic style to show you, but if you do want to see what the classic um, lash, what the classic lashes look like, then definitely go to my website, badshakehair.com, and they are there. So um, here are a few styles of the lashes that I have. Um, they are close-ups, like I mentioned, on my website as well. I typically do not wear eyelashes though. And you know, I just don't, I've tried the only lashes that I would wear. I, I like a more natural look. So I don't really go out that much. If I went out, like if I was going out and um, I was really getting like done up, then I would probably wear something a little bit more like eye catching. So I'd probably wear something a little bit more extra in my opinion. But typically I wear the classic lash and surprisingly, you know, that that's, those are the lashes that sold out a lot faster. Um, the classic lash, you know, I just, I kind of like it to just look, um, as natural as possible and sometimes I even want an extra look so it doesn't even have to look as natural but I just you know I feel more comfortable with um shorter lashes and the classic lashes aren't really 
two i mean in my opinion they're not really really short because sometimes I, i've gotten lashes and they'll be like really really short and i'm like no this is is not the look that i was going for but it really all depends in my opinion on what look you're going for i don't think there's just one style um that you can rock i think that depending on where you're going depending on the look that you're going for depending on how your hair is the outfit is your makeup is you know you for me it, it comes in handy to have different styles of things and so if i wore lashes every day i would definitely have my own set like stash of lashes different lashes that i would wear based on the circumstance and based on like i said my makeup my outfit where i'm going um, but i just wanted to show you that so if you do want a closer look like i mentioned then they are available on my website and the most popular style at this point are definitely my classic lashes so take a look at those when you get to the website as well the next question is what is my biggest fear so my biggest fear um you know a lot of you know that i have anxiety when i was younger i had anxiety even even more you know it was worse than it is now um I can say that I've always feared since becoming a mom of leaving my children before, you know, before they were old enough to care for themselves. Um, I just, that's something that really, really can get me down if I think about it, you know. Dying would be in relation to me leaving my children. So that would be probably like the, the biggest fear that I would always kind of have pop in my mind, you know. Um, you know, are you okay? Uh, what if you, you know, die? Who's going to take care of your children? Who's going to love them? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And um, yeah, that's something that definitely has has scared me many a nights. That's definitely something that has triggered my anxiety many of times. Um, you know, I just, just not wanting to leave my children. Now, what has helped with that is realizing that God is, God holds control and um, really praying and talking to God and, um, you know, making sure that I'm not taking any moment with my children for granted, making sure that every time that I get a chance to let them know that I love them, I let them know. Um, I probably say it to the point that they get tired of me hearing, they get tired of hearing it, <clears throat> excuse me, but I let them know that I do love them. Um, I use every moment that I can to teach them, um, you know, to, to show them right and wrong. And so uh, that definitely is one of my biggest fears. And then number five is how, how not to get frustrated in business. So um, I guess, you know, how, how can you not get frustrated in business? Great question. I don't know when you find out the answer, you let me know. No, I'm just joking. I mean, I don't think, it, it all depends on who you are. I made a video a few days ago that yes, business, being working with people in general, can be frustrating. Working with systems can be frustrating. I mean, just working can be frustrating. So I don't really think there's a way to avoid becoming frustrated at a certain time. I think it all kind of, frustration has a lot of different factors in it. Sometimes you can find yourself frustrated and you may just be frustrated because you're having a tough day or a tough week. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with becoming frustrated. Um, I think, you know, frustration is a pretty normal experience and feeling for a lot of us. I just think it's the way that you handle yourself and the way that you treat others, you know. In my opinion, it doesn't give you an excuse to treat others like crap. It doesn't give you an excuse to, you know, just have an effort type of attitude. So, um, I honestly, I can't, I can't really answer that question just, you know, like as just straight up. I can't just say this is a black and white question because I don't know. I mean, even sometimes I get frustrated. I get frustrated. Um, like I said, I don't let the frustration overtake me. I don't let it uh, affect how I treat other people. Um, I try to have patience. But what I can say is this, uh, you know, I would work on practicing more patience, being conscious of actually showing people grace and uh, constantly remind yourself of, you know, treating people how you want to be treated. Like I said, you may still get frustrated. There are some things that come up that may frustrate you. I just think it's a, it's about making a conscious effort to not, um, like I said before, allow your frustration to have a negative impact on how you treat other people. Um, and so, you know, that would be, those would be my tips. So I hope that you all enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below or reach out to me on any of my social media networks. That way we can go over your question on the next Sunday Chit Check Q&A video. Thanks again for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.